Hello students, this is Professor Del Russo and this is your class orientation. If you're watching or listening to this video in some future class, remember the dates will be different. Some of the instructions will be different. So if you're watching or listening to this video, make sure you take a look at your actual Canvas page and look at the dates that things are due and familiarize yourself with the syllabus as it exists at that time. You can see this is a fall 22 class, but it's going to be substantially similar, if not exactly the same in future years, although there may be minor tweaks. So bear that in mind. This is your orientation, and I'm going to describe to you how this course is set up, what you can expect from me, how to read the syllabus, and how to navigate around your CHAD 300 class. So... First of all, let's just take a look at the left side of your page here. You'll see the inbox here. The inbox will be mentioned later. That's how you communicate with me. I don't use email. We use the inbox. If you email me, I'm not going to read it because I don't check it that often. All of my colloquy, all of my discussions, all of my communications with you are done via the inbox. So make sure that you use the inbox to communicate with me and we'll be able to um, have discussions about anything you want to talk about. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later as I go through the syllabus. In any event, this is what your home page, your first page, should look like on Canvas. This is a student view. And you'll see there's something called the Academic Engagement Verification Activity. That's for some students, not all. If it's relevant to you, then do it. If it's not relevant to you, then ignore it. You'll see there's a section called Getting Started. I am making Getting Started due on September 11th, 2022. And in that section is this class, class orientation screencast. Since you're already watching it, you know that it's there. But it has to be watched and you have to take a class orientation quiz. You'll see the quiz in a, another section of this video in just a moment, but there will be a quiz on the class orientation video that is going on right now, and it's important that you do that class orientation quiz, and it has to be done by 9-11-2022. That's when it's due. And if you see on the side, there's a to-do list. All students will see this to-do list, and right there it's indicated that we have to do that class orientation quiz. And if you go down, you'll see all of the things that you are required to do that are in the nature of assignments. Assignments where you have to actually do something. We'll talk about the mini quizzes and the discussion forums and participation in a little bit. But just bear in mind that on this side of your homepage is a running to-do list and it'll have the date that things are due. So that's a handy way to keep control of your studies. And in a moment, I'm going to show you where the stuff is that you have to read and watch. The things on the side are assignments, quizzes, and examinations, and discussion forums. But in order to do those things, which are measures of your learning, you have to do the readings and watch the videos and do the classwork. So we're going to take a look at that in a moment. Okay, students, now we're going to take a look at your syllabus. And this is the basic setup on the first page. It has my name. If you need to get in touch with me on an emergent basis, that's my mobile number. You can text me there or call me there. Use it sparingly. I'd rather have you communicate with me through the inbox. This is really for emergencies, and they're rare or non-existent. I haven't had an emergency in a while, but you have the number. I don't discourage you from using it if there's a true emergency. You got my number if you really, really need me. Otherwise, use the inbox and communicate that way. It's much more efficient and it creates a record of what we talked about. If you wanna take a look at my biography, you can click on that link right there and you can see where I've been, my experience and my background in history. There's my email address. Again, I rarely use the email. You have to use the inbox. Here's a number at the university if you need to get in touch with me through university, 655 4188. 
that number usually goes to the main office. If the main office needs to contact me or some reason you need to talk to the main office about me, you got that number. It goes right to Chad. The department we're in and your classroom. Your classroom may be different. You may be in an online course, but on the first page of the syllabus, you'll get that information. You'll get the information about where to go and when the class ends. All of that is on the first page of your syllabus. Now we're going to look at the syllabus in real time on the web page. So I'll scroll through it. I won't be marking it up. And I'm not going to go over everything, but you have your course introduction and then you have your course policies. Make sure you read that. You have to familiarize yourself with this syllabus. This is the contract between you, the students, and me, the professor. And contracts in the law, and certainly in this class, at least metaphorically, this is a contract, it outlines what's expected of you and what you can expect of me. So make sure you fully familiarize yourself with this syllabus. In the second section, you'll see course policies. And in that course policy section, there is a area that describes about the sensitive issues that we will discuss in this class. A lot of forensic interviewing is about children who have been abused or neglected. And as you might expect, those are sensitive issues. Some of them may have personal relevance for some students. Look, everyone's encouraged to share your thoughts and reaction, but personal histories should not be shared on Canvas. And the discussion boards where you express yourselves, don't talk about trauma that you may have experienced, things that happened to you, how your parents may or may not have treated you, or things that happened in school, or what happened on the playground where you experienced some trauma. Those kind of things are important, but this is not the forum to talk about those kinds of very personal, intimate issues. And if anything that we talk about is particularly distressing, make sure that you private message me using inbox, okay? Make it known to me. You can call me also if you want. Ideally, I want you to message me through inbox and we'll figure it out. And if you need services, if you're triggered in some way, I'll make the referrals for further services. You can rest assured that there will be absolute confidentiality to the extent required by law and to the extent required by the university. Um, I'll, I'll be there to help you if somehow what we discuss causes you great consternation, great um, stress, okay? And in these forums, these discussion boards, you're expected to behave respectfully towards everyone else. You know, we don't take it personal. We don't attack people. We don't get political. We talk about facts. We talk about um, our observations and we make informed commentary. So just be, a, be aware of that. Um, you know, you should check your inbox daily. We'll talk about the cyber cafe in a little while. That's where most of our communication happens. If it's personal, then you use Canvas Messenger. I don't use email. I've said that multiple times. No email. Um, you might want to download the iOS app, the Canvas iOS app, or the Canvas Android app in the Google Play Store. You know, I use the app from time to time. Be careful with plagiarism, and plagiarism is more complicated than simply cutting and pasting. If you take someone else's work and present it as your own, that's plagiarism. Even ideas can be plagiarism. And if you plagiarize, if you knowingly plagiarize and you take the work of some third party and present it as your own, you know, then I'll have to take the appropriate action and I don't like doing that, but I will do it, rest assured, and there will be consequences. Here's your book, Deborah Ann Poole, 2016, Interviewing Children, The Science of Conversation in Forensic Contexts. You can get it on Amazon, you can get it online in a variety of places. I'm not so sure it's in the bookstore, but these days online is the most efficient way to get it. Look it up. It's the first edition and it's published by the American Psychological Association. You won't need it for the first week or so. I reproduced some other articles by Professor Fowler from a different book that's a little bit older, but it provides background. But I think by week two, you're going to need Deborah Poole's book. Okay. 
This class is delivered on campus. I realize some of you may be watching this video and you're taking it online. Well, then it doesn't apply to you. Um, but for those students who are on campus, attendance is required. I'll be taking attendance. And there's also a substantial amount of reading and writing expected. We want to help you become effective child advocates, and that's obviously really important. This class can be described as among the most important on campus because we work with kids. We work with the most vulnerable persons, and we want to make sure you're best prepared to do that. We want to make sure you learn stuff. And this isn't a gut. This isn't a gimme. This is a hard course. But I try to deliver the course in a way that makes sense to the average student. Um, quite repetitive. Some students don't like that. But I think re repetition is how things sink in, right? And just learning facts and remembering stuff isn't the way it works. I also expect you to reason, to think things out. And I will help you do that. But it ain't easy. So we hope that you do all of the readings um, there's not a heck of a lot of writing, but there's a lot of reading and you'll see how I evaluate you in a moment. You have to do these learning modules. All of the content you need to do is in the learning modules. We'll look at those in a moment. There are due dates and you have to do the things by the due dates. So this class is based upon three, um, I'm sorry, four different what you call modalities or ways of learning. And they're right here, learning modules. And that's basically the canvas space where the stuff is that you have to watch, read, look at, interact with, the learning modules. How do I grade you? Well, I grade you based upon the discussion boards, the mini quizzes, and the examinations. And we'll take a closer look at that in a little while, okay? There are eight learning modules in this course. All your class assignments, readings, and media are within each learning module. Pay close attention to those due dates. Most learning modules are two weeks long. Make sure you do the work. Don't wait till the last minute and don't simply rely on what I say in class. That won't matter to you online students, but you class students, on-campus students, if you simply listen to what I say in class and don't do any reading and don't watch the videos I shared with you or do any of the assignments I give you, you'll probably fail or maybe get a D. And we don't want that. We want you to get an A, you know? So you have to do the work. Don't simply rely on my lectures. And I'll tell you right now, I don't talk about everything that's gonna be on the quizzes or the exams. Not everything I do when I come to class reflects what you need to learn. So if you simply rely on the lectures, you won't do well in this class. Do the work and you'll do well. Take my word. These discussion boards, there's three of them in this course, learning modules two, three, and five. Not every learning module has a discussion forum, so just be aware of that, okay? There's three discussion forums, and all three of them together are worth 15% of your grade. They're not hard. We'll talk about them in a little bit, but they're not hard. Students tend to blow them off. Not all of you, but some of you blow them off. I don't know why. Each one is worth 5% because there's three of them and all three are worth 15%. You know, if you simply do them and provide a little bit of insight, be a little bit informed, you're gonna get 5% of your grade. Three times 15%, don't blow them off. Mini quizzes, every learning module, remember most of them are two weeks, two of them are one week. The learning modules, each learning module, okay, will have some kind of test afterwards. Each one will either have a mini quiz, okay, or at the halfway point and at the end of this course, you'll have a major examination, a midterm examination and a final examination. So every learning module will at least have a mini quiz. And there are five questions. They're available from 5 a.m. Saturday until Sunday at 11 p.m. There's not a lot of time to do these mini quizzes. The mini quizzes permit you to use your notes or the book. Bear in mind though, you're not gonna have time to go through your notes in the book. You really should know the content. But if you forget a concept and you need to take a quick look at your notes, you can do that. You're not allowed to do that on the midterm or the final exam. If you do that on the midterm or the final exam, 
That's academic dishonesty and it will be treated accordingly. You can get in big trouble. You don't want to get in big trouble. You don't want to be a cheater. You're not a cheater. You're someone who takes this seriously, who does the work. And when you do the midterm and you do the final exam, you do it based upon your understanding of the content. However, the mini quizzes, you're allowed to take a peek at your notes. Understand that. Among these mini quizzes, if you bomb on one, you're gonna be able to drop your lowest score. You only get one drop per semester. And when you look at your GPA or you look at your grades on Canvas, it automatically calculates and drops the lowest grade. So whenever you look at that final grade score, it already dropped your bomb quiz, if you ever bomb, okay? Thus, your score in the grade book is always your final score. <clears throat> Excuse me. The midterm and the final, just like the mini quizzes, will be available from 5 a.m. Saturday until Sunday at 11 p.m. on the weekend that the learning module ends. Your final exam will be conducted on campus during our last class session. Online students, that might be different. But on campus students, the midterm is available 5 a.m. Saturday till Sunday at 11. You take it on Canvas. You take it remotely. You take it on your computer. The final exam, you're going to take it in camp, on campus during our last class session. Okay? The midterm is worth 30% of your grade. The final is worth 35%. Here's the undergrad grading scale, speaks for itself. It's not a good thing to try to negotiate grades with me because I don't do it. I'll explain why you got a grade, but I will not consider ever changing a grade, an assignment grade or your final grade, unless I have made a demonstrable error. In other words, I don't entertain efforts to negotiate grades based upon your personal academic circumstance or for any other reason. So don't tell me if I only need, if I only had another 0.06 percentage on my grade, I would be able to be on the honor roll or I would get uh, 10 cents more in my um, financial aid. And while I may have some empathy for you because I was a student for many years, uh, I'm not gonna change the grade because if I change your grade, it's obviously <laughs> unfair to everybody else, right? You know, then I gotta give everybody 0.06 and I don't do that. And if you are not doing well, I don't give extra credit for any reason. So don't come to me and say, can I have extra credit? I really bombed on this. I don't do it. Now, if you have a compelling, unexpected, demonstrable reason, you can tell me why you were unable to finish the coursework. I'd rather you not do the coursework rather than try and bomb. I would be happy to discuss your personal situation. If it's compelling, unexpected, and you can demonstrate why this thing happened that you couldn't have anticipated. And then maybe we'll do a um, incomplete grade. You know, the class ends, you get another couple of weeks to do the work. We make a incomplete grade contract. The university does this not all the time, um, but in some appropriate cases, you can get an incomplete grade. That's how I handle that. I don't offer extra credit. It's here twice, the sensitive issues discussion. We don't do that. You know, you gotta come to all classes. And I'm not a big fan of students rolling in late. You know, I don't get too upset about it when you're an on-campus student. But if you make a habit of it, I'm gonna call you on it. I mean, if there's some reason why you can't make my class on time, because I'll be there, and you do that repeatedly, I'm gonna call you on it. I won't embarrass you in front of everybody else, but I will discuss it with you. Listen, one or two times, don't bother me. You know, most of the time, uh, I'll simply ignore it. If it's the third or fourth time, then I stop speaking. And that is not a good thing, right? I wait for you to sit down, then I keep talking. You don't want to be that person. Try to get there on time. Again, I'm not going to embarrass you the first time, the second time. You know, if it's repetitive and I don't know why and why is something that makes sense to me, you know, then you're going to have a talk with me and we'll figure out how to get up earlier or how to find a parking space or how to be on time. And I think most of you will be on time. I'm not too worried about that. And if it happens once in a blue moon, I don't really care. 
I'm just going to ignore it, come in, sit down, and catch up, okay? Um, I'm very flexible, but I don't like people taking advantage of me. And I don't let it happen. And it won't happen because you're all good students. You know, I could kind of look in your eyes and see whether you're on, you know, Yahoo Celebrity um, or whether you're, you know, looking at a TikTok without the sound on. I will know. And if it happens repeatedly, then I might point it out during class. And that's not fun. Or I'll give you a look. Don't do that. I expect you to be on your computers or your iPads or your tablets or whatever you're using. Um, and if you don't have a tablet or computer, I don't care, but most students do. And if you're on an electronic device, good for you, but you should be on the Canvas page. And I don't know how my brain is able to do this. Maybe it's something that professors develop over the years, but I can tell by looking in your eyes and I don't have a cognitive retinal uh, scanner built into my brain, <laughs> but, I, but I can tell just by the glaze in your eyes, whether you're looking at Canvas or you're looking at TikTok, okay? Don't do that, it's disrespectful, okay? If you get a text or you need to take a phone call, step outside. If that happens, I don't care. I'd rather have you get up from your seat and walk outside. Take the call, come back in. I won't treat you any differently. You're not in trouble, you didn't do anything wrong. You know what I don't like? When you're texting or your phone's ringing inside and you somehow hang up and then you text them back and you know, I don't go for that. Go outside, communicate with whoever you have to communicate with and then come back in. And I realized that there are emergencies. You know, maybe a parent called you, maybe your boyfriend's car broke down, maybe your girlfriend uh, needs to be picked up at a different location. You know, if you need to take a call or shoot a quick message or something, you know, go outside and do it. I don't go for texting and communicating with third parties during the classroom session. You know, once in a blue moon, if I see you doing a quick message, I probably ignore it, but don't make a habit of it. Don't record the lectures. I might record the lectures. I don't know about inclement weather. I mean, you might want to send me a message. Hey, we got school, it snowed. Um, if I know, I'll tell you. But, you know, and you, you should do that during in, in the cyber cafe so everybody sees the message. But, you know, I don't really know. I just go on the same websites you do. And I, you know, I'm just sign up for the university's text messages. So that's what you really need to do. Those of you who have DRC things, make sure I got them, make sure that I got the email and make sure you remind me that you have a DRC issue and I will make sure you get all the accommodations that are appropriate. You know, I don't go for dishonesty. I talked about that earlier. So that's your syllabus. We're gonna wrap that up right now and move on to the actual course content. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the course content. You saw some of this already when I opened this class orientation screencast. As you know, on 9-11-2022, you have to do this class orientation quiz. There it is, it's zero points. But if you don't do it by then, I'm gonna take at least one point off your final grade. Get it done, it's five questions. And if you're listening to me now, <laughs> you should get everyone right because that really reinforces what I'm talking about here. And I think that's real important. I think managing our expectations is vital in a classroom. So let's take a closer look at the learning modules. This is where the stuff is that you have to do in this course. Every learning module starts out with learning objectives and perspective, and we'll look at that in a minute. This is learning module one. You can see learning module one has a due date. Every learning module has the due date. Most of them are two weeks, some of them are one week. Make sure you take note of the due date. It's gonna catch up in a little while when we have a one week learning module, make sure you look at the due date, okay? Now, objectives, content, cyber cafe, mini quiz, review, and mini quiz. What's that all about? Let's move forward and take a look at the one for learning module two, just for the heck of it. Again, you have October 9th, 2022. That's when you have to finish all the stuff below that header right there. Learning module two, due 10 9 22. 
You have to read um, the learning objectives and look at the perspective. Let's see what learning objectives mean. Learning objectives say what you're expected to learn after you do the learning module. If I were you and I was studying for a test, I would take a look at what I expected you to learn in this learning module because that's what I'm teaching you. I want you to have a better and deeper understanding of basic child development and how child development relates to competent forensic interviewing. I want you to understand children's sexual development and how it relates to forensic interviewing. I want to disabuse you, get rid of common misunderstandings about how children develop sexually. And I want to identify the kinds of developmentally appropriate questions that children are capable of answering at various ages. This is a course on forensic interviewing of children and everything we talk about here helps you do a better job if you are ever privileged enough to interview children forensically, helps you do a better job of asking the right questions and questions that are not the type that might distort a child's memory and lead to an unfair narrative, one that could cause a guy to go to jail. So we wanna learn as much as we can about getting information from kids in a way that's fair and neutral and objective and doesn't distort their memories of what really happened. And this is just one example. Learning module two is about how can we use what we know about how children develop, how children develop sexually, and be a better forensic interviewer. Every learning module has learning objectives. I just went over in detail the learning objectives for module two. Module two. Every Every one of these modules has some learning objectives. And then not everyone has perspective. I don't think it might, but most of them do. And what I usually do there is provide an anecdote or a little story or put some picture there or have a video clip. In this module, my perspective is a, is a narrative. It's an anecdote. Other ones, you may click on a little video clip and you'll watch the video clip. And while you're not likely to be tested directly on the perspective. It gives you some context about what we're gonna talk about, what matters in this learning module. And here I talk about how we as lawyers, when I was a prosecutor, would meet with the judge to discuss the case. And I had a case where an eight-year-old child had been molested repeatedly by her stepfather and she had been abused by someone else in the past before her stepfather abused her. And the other lawyer, thought that the girl who was masturbatory um, and masturbating in a number of different places in an unusual way, including in the grocery store where her mom was shopping, that attorney thought that this helped his case. He thought that this child was so damaged that she'd be a terrible witness. When in fact, we would be able to explain to the jury or to the judge that this is not unusual, that children who've been sexually abused often become what we call sexualized. And the fact that they were molested may cause them to act out in a way that's um, precocious, sexually precocious. That is, they act in a way like an adult might. And we'll talk about masturbation and you know whether masturbation is normal or not. So when you do this learning module, you'll know more about this very sensitive issue when we get to that. So. That's the perspective. This perspective is related to what you're gonna learn about children in this learning module, okay? So let's go back to all the learning modules. That was learning module two. You have your objectives and perspective, and then in every module, you'll have a content link. Click on the content link, and there's the stuff you have to do. In this case, I've reproduced, remember I said the first couple of learning modules, you don't need the book. I've reproduced a chapter by Professor Fowler, so you need to read that, I'll click on that. And you can download it to your computer or you can look at it in this viewer that's built into Canvas, right? So there's a, there's a chapter there where it has um, a article or a book chapter written by Kathleen Fowler. This one's by Fowler and Hewitt. And you read that, that's among your readings. And you can make it bigger if you want. It could take up the whole screen, see? or you can make it smaller, or I'm gonna minimize it now, or you can hit this arrow here and it'll download to your computer if you wanna do that, you can print it out. Not every article or chapter has me providing a narrative about it. If you're an on-campus student, you can either read the chapter or listen to this. If you click on this link right here, this blue one right here, it'll play an audio podcast 
where I talk about Fowler's chapter 10. For your online students, you really need to do both. Read the chapter and listen to me explain it in that podcast. You'll have PDFs as well. There's one, two, three, four PDFs. They're just more stuff you got to read and watch. And they load just like the other one, right? And you can minimize it. And if you want to download it, hit the arrow and you can download it and print it. Some people like to do that. In the content section for this learning module, number two, you also have video clips. Each one of these video clips brings you to YouTube and it talks about on the YouTube page why these videos are important. So you have the links there and you have video clips. I'll turn one on now. Let's see if it plays. And I'm pretty sure it will. Hit the button and then it'll play the video. Okay? And you're not going to hear it now because we're doing this podcast. This video clip demonstrates how... This video clip demonstrates... All right, let's shut that off. So again, content and module link. This is all the stuff you have to do. Everything you have to do in learning module two by October 9th. Now this will unlock on September 26th. That's a Monday morning. That's the day after the previous learning module was due. Open on the 26th. It's a two week module. So by October 9th, you need to do everything in here. Learning module two content and materials. Since this module has a discussion participation, okay, then you have to do the discussion participation too. I think I might have had a mistake, made a mistake in the um, syllabus. I think they said three, five, and seven or something. Your first learning module discussion forum is right here in learning module two, the impact of child development on forensic interviewing. These are due by Sunday night, the last night of a module, which is on a Sunday night, and there is a prompt. A basic understanding of child development is crucial and read the prompt. Read the directive. Referencing your readings for learning modules one and two, please discuss the above bullet points with your student, with your classmates. You're not gonna see anybody's post until you do your first post. So you'll see a blank thing just like this. You hit, I have to subscribe to that. You hit reply and then you write your observation. You follow the directions above and you write your observation or your post, okay? You must then respond to a classmate. You will then see after your first post, you'll see your classmates' posts. If you see one that's interesting or provocative, you need to post a response or an observation, provide input. And what I don't like is cheerleading. I don't want you to say, Danielle, that was a really great post. Danielle, wow, you rock. You're so astute, Danielle. No, tell me why Danielle's post rocked. What was interesting about it? What did she say that you didn't think of? Why was it relevant to what we talked about? Okay, I don't need 10 paragraphs. I don't need you to be brilliant. I just need you to say why you think Danielle's post is interesting or matters or provocative or you didn't think about that thing. Tell me why, why? Don't just say, oh, that post was really interesting. No, that's not a response to a classmate and points will be deducted. So you need to post twice, make an original original observation and post, and then respond to one of your classmates in the manner I just suggested. You can post more than twice, that's a minimum. Many students do post more than twice. If you only post twice, I won't hold it against you, you can still get 100. You know, I don't go, well, they posted five times, this student only posted two times, therefore I'm gonna give the two times student a 90, no. It's the quality, not how many times you post. But it has to be at least two times, okay? Actually, I don't want to subscribe to this. So, discussion participation one is an example of something that you have to do in a learning module. Every learning module is constructed this way. Objectives and perspective, content, discussion participation, if there is one. There's only a few, okay? Then you have your mini quizzes. Every module has either a mini quiz or an exam in it. This one is a mini quiz. I give you a little micro review. You may hear me mention a graduate class 
It's the same review because the content's the same. The questions are different for graduate students and it's a little bit different. But here, your micro review is 90, not even 90 seconds, like 60 or 70 seconds. It just points you in the right direction to take the mini quiz. And the mini quiz is only about this module, learning module two. Five questions in five minutes. So it's fast. You can use your notes. You can't use your notes in the midterm or the final. This is what every learning module looks like. Learning module three looks very similar. Actually, three also has a discussion forum. Learning module four, very similar. That's where your midterm is though. Okay, your midterm is on October 30th. That's the day this learning module ends. Remember, it's available from Saturday at five in the morning till Sunday at 11 p.m. But if you take a look at that, I'll take a look at it right now. It's very fast paced. There's 25 questions, you only have 30 minutes. It's closed book. The mini quizzes are not closed book. Closed book. The mini quizzes are not closed book. Remember that. Let's go back. And again, every module has the same structure. Okay? Now, lastly, I'm going to wrap up by showing you the Cyber Cafe. Every module has a link to the Cyber Cafe. What's the Cyber Cafe? Well, that's how you should communicate with um, me. The Cyber Cafe is a place for you, a place for you to ask questions, to maybe talk about a news thing you saw on television or you found an article that's relevant to our studies. Put it in the Cyber Cafe. This is our class bulletin board. If there's a broken link, for example, post it here. Don't direct message me if the thing that you have to say here Another student might want to know. If there's a broken link, there could be another student who saw the broken link and they need to know what to do. Or if there's a book that I recommend that's not in the bookstore, don't private message me in the inbox. Put it in the cyber cafe because other students might have the same question. You know, if it's snowing out and you want to post in the cyber cafe, you're not the only one who's worried about the snow. Put it in here. If I can help you, I will. And I expect you other students to figure this out. If there's a question one student has and you know the answer, you know, you know, I didn't know if Professor Del Russo is allowing us to use our notes in the mini quizzes. I thought he said something about that. I forgot. Professor Del Russo, are we allowed to use our notes in the mini quizzes? One of your classmates, if I don't see this right away, I don't look at this 24 seven. If I don't see it, one of the other students sees it. They can say, hey, Danielle, Professor Del Russo said we're allowed to use our notes in the mini quizzes. When I see your response later, I'll go, that's right. Or I won't say anything at all if you got it right. This is the place where we talk to one another about almost everything. You only post, you only post over here in inbox if it's private or personal. Your grandma passed away, you can't make class. Don't put that in a cyber cafe. Don't email me, put it in the inbox. That's a private message, that's a DM as you young people say, DM me, okay? DM me, PM me. Only private stuff. Ask yourself, can other students have this question? And almost every question you have about the course, some other student might have. If I mess something up and I make a mistake or my dates are wrong, put it in the cyber cafe. Grandma passed away, inbox, okay? You broke your leg and you wanna show me that you can't make class and you put your emergency room record on canvas, do it in the private inbox. Personal stuff goes in there. Personal stuff goes in the inbox. Everything else that's not personal, you post it right here. I subscribe to it, so I'll see it. You're automatically subscribed. And it gets pushed to my email. So when you post something in the Cyber Cafe, I get it in my email and then I see it eventually, okay? So that's what the Cyber Cafe is. The Cyber Cafe is for everything that you wanna ask me. And let's say you see something interesting that's on TV on the weekend, post it there. You know, if you read an interesting article in the New Yorker and it has something to do with what we're doing in this class, post it there. So I'm gonna hit the home button. One last time, let's take a look at a module. Let's take a look at module three. 
the anatomy of a module, learning objectives and perspective. All the stuff you need to do is here. It has to be done by the date, October 16th. Cyber Cafe is to ask me questions. Discussion participation forums are worth five points each, 15 points in the aggregate. And every module has a mini quiz and a micro review. The micro review doesn't open up until the weekend of the mini quiz. The mini quizzes are open book and open notes. That's the anatomy of a learning module, okay? And there are eight learning modules. There your, there's your last learning module in this course. Online students, this may be a little bit different. Um, you're going to take your exam a little bit differently than the on-campus students will be taking it in class. You on-campus students will be taking this final examination on your last class, which is a Monday on December 19th. Okay? And I may be doing... Um, you're going to have reviews online like this, or I may be um, doing an in-class review. I haven't decided that yet. But in these reviews, just to wrap up here, in these reviews, it's also a discussion board. So if you have questions about mini quiz five or the content and learning module five, then by all means, hit the reply button here and then tell me your question. If you put it in a cyber cafe, that's cool too, but it's it's better if you put it in the review page because every review has a, um, is part of a discussion board. Here's the mini quiz six review. There's a discussion forum here and I'm subscribed to them. Okay, so if you have a question about stuff in module six, then you can post it right there. Okay, students, I'm really excited to be back on campus. I look forward to meeting you all. I know you're gonna do great. This is really interesting stuff. Um, my bark is worse than my bite. I have a little dog right now. He's licking my feet as I make this video. So yeah, don't be intimidated. I really enjoy what I do. And you know what matters to me most is your success. I don't like slackers. I don't like people who mail it in, but I know you won't do that. If you're truly sincere about learning this stuff, even if you don't wanna be a forensic interviewer, you just wanted to take this course because it seems interesting, but you wanna become a, you know, a business person or a mathematician and you thought this was interesting, well, I think you're interesting and I want to make this course as interesting as possible and as sticky as possible. I want you to learn. I want you to learn. Um, anytime that you guys don't do well, I don't do well. That's a reflection of my ability to teach you. So I try to do the best I can um, and I expect the same from you. I put a lot of work into this and I expect you'll put a lot of work into it as well. Good luck.